Get up, get ready, because we have another at-home edition of World of Fortnite for you. I'm your host, Sarah Pookie Facelin, and we have a great show for you today. The rotation has the top five weapons so far in season seven, point of interest looks at the evolution of Loot Lake, and of course, we have everything the community is passing around in low ground. Another superhero has arrived on Fortnite Island, and this time, it's the god of mischief, Loki. Loki's outfit comes bundled with his gold-trimmed cape, a scepter for resource harvesting, a glider, and some loading screen art showing his arrival. Pretty neat. Let's get right into it because the rotation has all the best weapons in Season 7. Fortnite Season 7 has brought to us an alien invasion and high-tech weapons that are unlike anything we have ever seen before. The IO, an advanced organization that controls the loop, has appeared on the island with their feministic technology that applies to vehicles as well. Today, we'll be taking you through the top 5 weapons in Season 7 so far. These do not include weapons that have already been in the game, but classics such as the Gold Pump are still top tier. At number 5, we have the Pulse Rifle, an assault rifle with two firing modes. This one is very similar to the Stark Industries Energy Rifle from Chapter 2 Season 4. The Pulse Rifle is an automatic AR if you do not ADS, but if you're aiming and shooting, you have to manually shoot each bullet. This makes it a good weapon for close-ranged combat as you can spray it like an SMG up close while you can carefully plan your shots from a distance. This gun certainly rewards good aim and has a mythic version available from Dr. Sloan at Corny Complex. The Pulse Rifle is easily available around the map, but it honestly doesn't feel as easy and convenient to use as the good old mechanical assault rifles. Number 4 on our list is the Ray Gun. The Ray Gun has a fire rate of 15, which is the highest among all weapons in Fortnite, and features infinite ammo with a shooting cooldown. The Ray Gun is a beam weapon and directly connects with the enemy, with consecutive shots landing in quick succession without having to aim each shot separately. The advantage of beam guns is that even if you're ADSing, your FOV isn't so zoomed in that you cannot aim properly. This gun is not effective against builds, but is great against vehicles including UFOs. The Mythic version, called called Zig and Choppy's Ray Gun, features the highest damage and can melt enemies quite easily. Number 3 on our list is the UFO. Technically a vehicle, the UFO is equipped with multiple mechanisms that can let you do damage to enemy players. For starters, we have the Energy Cannon, a glowing energy orb that does damage to builds and players and knocks players away like impulse grenades. Then we have the Abduction Mechanism that lets you pick up enemy players and drop them in the storm or at a high point that they can't get down from. The UFO also acts as a sniper tower. If you go high enough and change seats in the UFO, it will stay afloat for a long time time before it starts to descend again. At number 2, we have the Recon Scanner. This one is similar to the old flare gun, except it has infinite charges, a cooldown, and marks enemies effectively for 10 seconds. However, marked enemies know that they have been marked. The scanner also marks nearby NPC enemies, chests, and ammo boxes. The Recon Scanner creates a virtual orb on shooting it, marking all players within the orb with a red ping marker and an outline. Remember the aimbot gun clickbait from 2018? It's finally come true. Knowing enemy locations is the best advantage a player can have in any PvP shooter. This gun pairs especially well with the next weapon on our list that can let you shoot through walls. Finally, number one on our list is the Railgun, the most overpowered gun of Season 7. This gun can shoot through player builds and shoots a single energy beam that is visible to nearby players. The Railgun needs to be charged to reach its full damage capacity, which can be achieved by holding down the attack button. Even when you're charging it, the gun emits a red beam that can be seen by everyone, giving away your exact location to enemies. If you use a recon scanner in an area to mark enemies, you can easily follow it up with a Railgun to shoot through builds and get some easy kills. These guns really keep the game fresh and feel very different from everything we've had before. More new weapons have been hinted in the Season 7 teasers, and hopefully we'll get many more fun weapons. Welcome to another edition of Playing with Pooks. Uh, what I thought I would do today is uh, take a look at the Battle Pass. We haven't really talked too much about Battle Passes or anything like that on the Playing with Pooks segment. 
and seeing as the seasons is pretty good i thought i would take a look go through it take a look at the current ltms that are in the game uh, maybe hop in try one out and go from there really just take a deep dive in because i have not bought it yet there it is we've unlocked it ladies and gentlemen first thing you'll notice that you get unlocked is chimera it doesn't look great with the back bling that i have on there right now they've kind of redone the battle pass pages so they look a lot different than they did a couple of seasons ago. Battle stars. Earn five battle stars every time you level up. So every time you go through the battle pass, get a level, you get yourself five stars. You can spend them to claim the battle pass rewards in the order that you want. So this is a way, way more customizable battle pass than we've seen in the past. Um, before it was just like you have to go through and you have to kind of go level 1 to 100 you get the rewards as you level up it's very binary there's really no way to customize it I really 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 like what they've done here for two reasons uh, first reason is if you're like myself and you don't have a ton of time to sink into getting the battle pass all the way up to level 100 this still gives you incentive to kind of pick and choose what you want to unlock the second reason i like it is because on the other hand if you have a ton of time to play and unlock the whole battle pass if you like one skin more than another you can concentrate on the ones that you like more first and then purchase the ones that you maybe don't like as much going forward last of all uh we've got bars so it's basically the same thing bars persist per between matches unless of course you're playing arena they reset after every single game um you can spend the bars to upgrade your weapons up with upgrade benches um vending machines are back in a very big way which is pretty neat because we haven't seen those in a few seasons um and pretty cool uh here we have joey doesn't look like a joey to me looks like more of like a mac or something but like it's fine it's fine we'll roll with it uh naming convention epic maybe next time we could we could not name him joey it, it's just kind of strange um but <laughs> here we have joey um and he looks pretty pretty neat pretty cool um you can see here he's got a little uh little friendo little alien friendo in this spray so it's kind of cool um moving on though to nope to unzipped which is like the coolest emote ever here let me show you this in full screen it's joey Just kidding. <laughs> kind of creepy. Kind of cool. All at the same time. You love to see it. Um, we have this cute little back bling. It's Meowsles. Uh, big fan of Meowsles from a few seasons ago. Caddy Corner, my place to drop. Love it. Um, over here on page seven, we've got Zig. Now Zig, Zig's pretty cool. Although you can tell that he definitely skips leg day all the time. Zig you're you're really cool you're a really neat guy but you gotta you gotta start doing those squats it's starting to show and it's you're looking a little disproportionate but it's fine it's fine you can fix it it's it's okay um he also comes with this cute little back bling guy called choppy um choppy i think he's just controlling his mind i don't know this whole running theme of aliens throughout this whole season ufos love it love it a lot uh, down here we have Dr. Sloan, um, who is uh, basically an evil genius. Evil genius? Yeah. We'll call Dr. Sloan an evil genius. Um, pretty neat outfit. Loving the boots. Loving the boots. Um, pretty neat skin overall. Cool boots, cool glasses. Guys, I'm waiting for the day when Epic finally says if you own a skin, you can actually customize a skin with other components of skins. Do you know what I mean? Imagine like the Lynx catsuit with like these boots and these glasses and maybe even the tie. How cool would that be? You could create some really, really neat customizations waiting for the day. Um, here we have, whoopsie, here we have Dr. Sloan. Again, she's all, she's all in a bow suit. She's ready to go. Uh, so you can see her here. Also pretty sleek. I, I really, really like 
the the aesthetic that they're going for in the past couple of battle passes i think it's just super neat um here we have morty he is uh, in the form of a of a pickaxe a harvesting tool if you will he looks very distraught poor morty um obviously from from rick and morty um and here we have rick sanchez he has finally made his his debut in the game he, i will say the skin does look a little bit weird when you're in game when you're actually playing and you see rick sanchez just walk up to you like it feels of course fortnite has like that cartoon vibe but it just feels even more cartoon like so it's just strange um but that's the battle pass guys like i said super customizable in the way that you want to unlock things um if you want to unlock absolutely everything obviously you're going to have to hit the 500 um battle pass stars um which is equivalent to 100 levels so there's that but it's it's just super cool there i am in ufo again cute we love it um so if you've not bought the battle pass yet be sure to check it out because season seven arguably has one of the most customizable battle passes yet and you certainly will not regret it that is gonna be it for me for playing with pooks and i will see you all in the next one bye bye Tam jeszcze chodzi na pewno w tym momencie. A, prawda, a motor. Siesi. Jadę. Czy ty lecę od tam, ale to jest bo jest w ten sam. Co dać? Zero. Dead. Double ding. Dead. Dead book. A może jestem wszelko, że tak może grać. Nie, a może nie gra. No ale jak nie gram, jak nie gram, jak nie gram. sit out there in the open. I'll go somewhere else to do my bidding, do my fishing. It's gonna be down towards the edge here. Back with Commandment though. Again, Justice bills. runs out of bills. Beautiful edit right there though. 55 on the Punish Sundown. Oh my gosh, how do you win that? Due to global warming, Hot Drops has been a little too hot lately, so we've decided to install a pool on low ground to make sure we can cool off just a little bit. Heat waves and stuff. When is fall again? <laughs> First up, Thoriomite will try anything to keep themselves entertained.
You quit? Dude, I was dropping in for the full ride. I'm disappointed. Next up, Conrad finds the coolest plane in Fortnite. Well, there is nothing plain and simple about that clip. Moving on, Don Pija is accidentally given an alien weapon from a minigame, but in a regular match. What's that, Fortnite devs? It's a feature, not a bug? Kidding, I love you guys. Next up, Fortnite Dad YouTube makes a Fortnite Llama nature documentary. The Fortnite Llama, a docile and peaceful herbivore who often makes the mistake of thinking he is safe, grazing out in the open. Nothing could be further from the truth. The big cat has seen its prey from afar, and now closes in for the kill. The unsuspecting llama doesn't sense any danger until it is too late. The killing is brutal and swift, although not swift enough, some might say. But this is nature's way. And the big cat now has full health and shield, and will go on to claim the solo win. Really channeling his inner David Attenborough there. Love that. <laughs> Finally, Splash Squadron user busts an illegal arms dealer. Hold on, I thought that GTA 6 wasn't supposed to come out until 2025. What did I just watch? <laughs> what is going on? <laughs> Let's move on, because Point of Interest gives us the evolution of Loot Lake. Loot Lake was one of the most iconic locations from Chapter 1 of Fortnite. This POI has witnessed the most important events from Chapter 1, been through more map changes than any other POI, and has revealed itself to play a key role in Fortnite's central storyline as the plot has unfolded. Today, we'll be taking you through the story of Loot Lake and how it has evolved over time. When it first came out, Loot Lake was just an alliteration. There wasn't an abundance of loot or combat in the area, and it wasn't really considered to be a good landing spot. Back in Chapter 1, you also couldn't swim through water, and you had to jump through it while it slowed you down, making you an easy target for anyone sniping from outside of the lake. It was still a location everyone often visited because it was in the middle of the map and was always part of the first storm circle. Not much happened in the first half of chapter 1 until season 5 when Kevin the Cube spawned on the island. The giant purple cube slowly rolled around the island, making its way towards Loot Lake and leaving behind cube runes and low gravity zones. Then came the event where Kevin dropped into the water of Loot Lake, turning the entire like purple and bouncy like that of the cube's surface. This was one of the most fun versions of the lake, with 50v50 matches being extremely fun if your circle was on Loot Lake. As enjoyable as it was, the lake had been corrupted and Fortnite's story was just getting started. When Season 6 started, Kevin the Cube rose out of the water with the house on top of it, creating a location unlike anything anyone had ever seen in any other game. The floating island was the second version of Loot Lake and landing here was so much fun. The winds that could take you up were also a great way to get around the island and added extra mobility to the game. Season 6 was all about darkness, with the cube spreading its evil energy across the island. The cube then went on to partially destroy the floating island. At the end of Season 6, there was an event where the cube charged up and took us all into an alternate dimension. This was our first experience with the zero point, 
the orb that gives the energy to our island. The rift butterfly transported us back from the limbo to our own island, where Loot Lake had transformed into Leaky Lake. Loot Lake's next version was an ice-covered Leaky Lake, followed by the iconic metallic vault version of Loot Lake. The government, now known as the Io, had discovered a metallic surface beneath the lake and had set up laboratories to study it. This surface was actually a vault, and it opened up and took us back into the limbo in Season 8's unvaulting event, where we had to choose which weapons we could bring back to Fortnite. In the background, we could see the giant zero point as well. In the Season 9 event, we witnessed an epic battle between the monster and the robot. The monster had been brought to our island by Ice King's invasion in Season 7, and the robot was being controlled by Singularity. The monster wanted to get into the vault and grab the zero point. The robot tried its best to keep it away until it was losing the battle and had to open the vault, harness the energy of the zero point, and use it against the monster to defeat it and save our island from a reality collapse. This fight left the vault opened and the zero point exposed, which led us to season X. In season X, the zero point had exploded, causing rift zones and time inconsistencies around the island. Reality and time now started messing with the island, and a collapse was imminent. During the end event, the rocket and meteor finally went through the rifts, circled the island, and finally crashed straight into the zero point in Loot Lake, causing a huge shockwave and sending our island into a black hole. This was the last time we saw Loot Lake and the chapter one map. Looking back, all of that chapter was based around various factions looking to acquire the power that was stored within Loot Lake. It's always such a trip for me to go back and see how the map and the overall game of Fortnite has changed and evolved so much over the years. It never fails to make me nostalgic and want to go in the corner and just maybe shed a small tear or two. That about does it for me, but for more of our content, check out our YouTube and Twitter channels at Squad State. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, here's your Victor Royale with cheese. Come on over here. Come on over here. No, you flipped me off. Come on, Tower. No, no, no. Come on. You're not an intellectual. You're a fake and a fraud.